people of the internet, it is a new month, and I want to give you a quick update on my progress, and then show you a new product from Zero Shoes, and compare it to what I started running with, and what I'm going to continue running with. Let's begin. Alright, so for last month, I accumulated almost 68 miles, so I'm doing better than I was last month, and the longest run that I did was a little over eight and a half miles, doing a little better there, and the average pace, well, that now is about, the best average pace is 26 seconds faster, and I've lost another seven and a half pounds, and I have sliced another inch and a half off my waist. Now let's compare those products. All right, so we've got the original Zero Shoe. This is the four millimeter version, nice and floppy. And now we're gonna compare it to the Sensori Venture. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but this is a bit thicker. It's about uh, 5.5 millimeters, see it's not as floppy. And I'll just go through the pros and cons. We'll go, we'll do the pros first. All right, now as you can see, let me put this down here so I can show you. It's a little different, like you're not gonna have to come up with your own little lacing style. I mean, you can if you want, but I mean, it comes like this, it's ready to go, it's pretty adjustable. You can use these to adjust it, it's going on both sides. It's a little easier to adjust, and it even has this little silicone, silicone thing to keep the uh, laces together on your heel. I never had any problems with the laces on the other one. Maybe some other people did. Uh, this this is a different feature. Um, you can see here with the lace, all they pretty much do is you take a lighter with your lace and heat it up and then you just flatten it down. And I never feel this. I never have any problems with it. And I've actually taken putting a shoe goo on it. It gives you a little more protection. But with the new version, they have this little silicone strap, very tough, but then it's recessed a little bit in there. You can see the mold is actually made with a little recession, but it's still, this, this is going to wear down before the silicone will, so that's still going to be, you know, scraping a little, but I didn't really notice it at all. So that's not an issue. What I did notice, well... We'll leave that for the cons, but uh, what else we got for pros? Oh, okay. Right here, I want to compare. Here's the original. Here's how it, ha it they uh, set that up, and you can see, I don't know if you can really tell, that's some more shoe goo. Just gives it a little more protection. They didn't, like, rub through or anything, but I did notice there was a little abrasion. And with the original, you can see, well, if you're stepping on the sides, which you really shouldn't be putting much pressure right there but uh these can wear they can wear through just because of how how they are situated but so i mean they they took that into account when making these and now you see it's up on the sides you can see it's raised up a little here so there's not going to be any scraping there and that's the same reason why they did this cuz they didn't want that knot i'm sure after a while like it, it would it would wear through these have about 110 miles on them I was only able to put about I want to say about 17 miles on these before I decided I'm not gonna wear these and I'll tell you why I'm not gonna wear them uh, what else did they improve well the heel cup hmm, floral fragrance but the heel cup um if they fit correctly, which I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit, the heel cup was supposed to uh, keep debris from coming out. And I guess I guess it was supposed to be comfortable, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that's an improvement. I guess that's the the only real improvements on it. I mean, it's like easier to adjust. You're not going to have to time yourself. You don't have to cut them. You can cut them. But then you get into the cons. All right, this right here is custom fit to my foot. You give them a tracing, and you you put a little dot in between your first two toes, and and that's where that's put exactly where it's supposed to be for your foot. And they cut it around. You do a little tracing around your foot, and they cut it perfect for your foot. 
And you can see these are, this is a size 14, this is custom made, but you can see it's pretty much the same. I mean, if I could get it set, it's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same size, even though it's custom cut. I don't know if you can really tell. That's pretty much the same length. Um, so we'll get into the sizing in a second, but I guess a con could be, you can see this is green with the yellow laces. Your only choice for the bottom is going to be that black. The only thing that you get a choice really in color-wise is little silicone parts and the laces. That's not really a big con. Uh, with the silicone though, I've noticed that this, that's always going to be that size. So if they're a little snug, you're going to run into problems there. A little abrasion. And silicone on your foot, especially when you're, you're sweaty or you run through something that's wet, against bare skin, it's not as forgiving as this lace, which you can... Okay, my camera died on me batteries went out but uh, yeah I was talking about how this right here is a lot more forgiving it's softer it moves around you can see it moves in any which direction so if your foot shifts a little as it's going to with something like this you're not gonna have those abrasion problems it's even this little rope like your foot doesn't really move like this and so you're not gonna have those abrasion problems but with this well it kinda wants to stay in that same shape all the time. Sure, it can move a little, but you have resistance. And, you know, I, I came into, I wore the toe socks because it was cold out, and I still got a blister on my left foot with the toe socks on. Never got a blister with these. 110 plus miles on them, never got a blister. First run in these, got a blister. Uh, so I thought, okay, maybe I had my foot shifted too far forward because I noticed it was tight. I could feel this in between my toes as I ran. So I loosened everything up and I shifted it so my heel would come back farther. Um, and then I wore them without the toe socks. Well, I got a blister in the same spot, like in between my toes, a blister on top of my toe, and then a blister on my heel. Now... When you say that, of course, Zero Shoes is going to tell you, oh, you must be heel strike. And let me show you something here. 110 miles. Look where the wear is. I don't know if you can really tell, but I'll, I'll show you. Right here, almost smooth. A heel striker would have the heel almost smooth. Not sure if you can tell. There's, it's not smooth down on the heel. It's smooth down right here. Not heel striking. Uh, the problem is... <clears throat> then whenever I had them loosened, and my heel, of course, would shift a little bit as I'm running, especially up and down hills, uh, my, my heel was rubbing, I don't know if it was rubbing that little seam there or not, or if it was just, you know, rubbing on, coming on the side here and then sliding down. With this, you don't have that. You don't have any heel at all. If, you, if you're sli slipping off the side, you're slipping off the side. You're not. You I mean you're not going to feel that abrasion. So, I had. Oh, and also on my right foot, I got a blister too with these lovely new things. But I'm not bashing them. I'm just saying, and I'll show you why I'm not bashing them. It has to do with the sizing. These are the 14s. These are the highest they decided to go with because they uh, they don't custom fit them for you and they have to pay for the mold just because of this little dinky thing and I think the heel cup anyway was a bad idea in my mind it adds more weight on your heel uh, and I, I don't really like it and it just it's unneeded I never had problems with the heel but uh, yeah I'm going back to running with these and I'll wear them down until I got a hole through the thing or yeah, I'm probably run it until there's a hole in it. If the laces wear through, I can always, I got plenty of extra here. So I'm going back to these. But I want to show you why I'm not bashing them. That If they fit you, I'm sure they're pretty good as long as that silicone isn't giving you issues on the bare skin. But let me, I'm going to break down an image I made that shows you why there's sizing problems. Because 
even though these from the bottom are the same size, I'm going to show you why this heel cup, I mean, I don't know if I can, if you can really tell, but the heel cup, here's the end of it, but then it curves in and you lose, I want to say five eighths of an inch because I measured it from here to the, the end of the flat. You're losing that, that amount. And this is as big as they go. They say they go up to 15s and 16s, but even cut out, it's the same size as this one. So, I mean, this could have been from a 15. I don't know. But let me show you this image. We'll break it down, and I'll show you why it, it might work for you. If they had a 15 available, maybe these would be a little more comfortable. But I can't run with them because they don't have 15, and I'm not going to worry about blisters anymore. I'm going back to these, a lot more comfortable. But let's look at that image, and then I'm going to show you how things are going to change for this month so that it's a little easier for me. I got some scheduling issues coming up. All right, now here's the image I made up. These, This right here, of course, is the original custom fit one, and you can see they're pretty much right in line. I have a little clothespin over here holding them together, and of course the ventures are on the bottom here. Now you can see they're about the same length, and here I'm showing you. Here is the end of the original. You can go all the way to the end if you want, but right here, you really only have that amount of flat, and then it starts going into that little curved deal right there that really cups your heel. So you, you lose out on 5 eighths of an inch. So these will not fit for you. On top of the fact that for my foot to be custom foot, the hole should be shifted a little far, further forward. Here it's back, which is making it so I have even less of a foot. It's really crunching me into this area here so that's why I got a blister here and I got a blister here and as you can see the original lace see right here it's squeezed down to about that thickness but the silicone's always going to be that thick no matter what that's the reason for the problems um, if you normally wear 14's you're probably going to run into this issue yourself uh, if you wear 13s, the 14s probably will fit you good, and they're, it's probably a pretty good product for you. I, I do like this. I don't really like the heel cup, and I'm not sure if I like this. I haven't worn them on, in a pair that fits, so I don't know. The heel cup, though, could go. But if you wear 13s or below, these are probably pretty good zero shoes for you. Otherwise, go with the custom fit ones. Have them cut them out for you. They come laced up all you need to do is maybe put some shoe goo on and you're ready to go you know adjust it really good shoe now let me tell you about some changes okay now there's going to be some scheduling changes for this month and probably the rest of the time that i'm doing this all the way up until march this scheduling will probably stay the same once it's put in place um currently i was running two times a week and doing two long runs a week and that, that was pretty fine like my feet were getting used to that not too bad to do eight plus miles two times a week when I was doing it Monday and Friday good space in between them but I'm gonna be moving soon there's gonna be some scheduling changes of course so when I'm working full-time you're probably only gonna get Saturday and Sunday off that's you know that's the average days you get off they're gonna be back-to-back -back days and I don't think my feet will really be able to handle an eight foot, uh, an eight mile plus run. I mean, the next run I'm going to do because I beat my best pace is going to probably be closer to nine miles. So I don't think I can do back to back nine mile runs. So what I'm going to do is Saturday I'll do. Okay, Sunday is going to be the the long run. The one where I keep progressing longer and longer. I'm, I'm aiming to get up to 15 miles max. That's my goal. That one's going to keep progressing. That, that run's going to be the one where I keep track of the pace, the overall pace. And that's going to be the harder run. That'll be on Sunday. Saturday, I'm going to do half of whatever the longer run is. So if I'm doing a nine mile run, it's going to be four and a half mile run on Saturday. It'll get my legs a little warmed up. It's not going to really overly 
hurt my feet or my legs you know if I was doing two back-to-back -back nine mile runs and I just switched into that right away I'm sure I would be feeling that and the second run would be really bad it would always probably be the worst run so I don't want to run into that I'd rather warm my legs up and be able to handle still running two times a week it's gonna be a little different because I'm gonna have you know five days off of running but it gives me a chance to really recoup and I'll build up with the uh, the shorter run and I'll have an, a faster pace a little change up for my body but then when I do the long runs I'll kind of be Jones in for that long run to out outdo the pace and I think it'll probably be better because that longer run is just going to keep going 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 and then even the shorter run is going to eventually be just as long as my long runs used to be or are at this point because if I get to that 15 mile point well I'm just, that's going to be still a pretty good Long, a long half run there and the only other thing I'm changing is when I first started this I told you guys about how I was making pasta with uh, just some kind of meat and some kind of vegetable in it and I would fill a bowl like that big around and just eat it and I was still losing weight I was just housing that it wasn't like horrible food but the amount was a little too much so on those five days where I'm working and I'm not running I'm going to kind of taper things back and just eat, you know, maybe one sandwich with, you know, some vegetables and this and that. Not quite as much. So that hopefully that'll, I'm still losing weight, but hopefully that'll bring things down a little more and it'll be easier on the budget. And uh, the short run day, the half run day, that day is going to be the Tarumara diet at first. I'll have the breakfast. I'll have my uh, uh, pre-drink and then I'll eat the brownie on the run but then the last two meals of that day are going to be kind of cheap meals probably going to be Chinese food I love Chinese food I love all Asian cuisine but so I kind of get a little cheat day there to make up for the lowering of the overall calories on the five other days but then the long the long run day that's going to stay the same that's still going to be full on Tarumara diet for the full time so those are the changes that's the comparison for the shoes and that's where I'm at right now I'm still making progress got a lot of changes coming in the future so I, I hope I can get used to running at a higher altitude see you next month